This is Indianapolis coach, Reggie Wayne, and you're listening to the For the Culture podcast. This is the For the Culture podcast. I'm your host, Luke Diamond, with my man, Jason Spears. The Colts make a depth signing to the cornerback room, signing cornerback TJ Carey to a one-year veteran minimum contract, so it's not going to cost you anything. You add depth and veteran experience, a guy who started 50 career games between Oakland and Cleveland, to the cornerback room, a room that needed a veteran presence after releasing Pierre Desir about a week and a half ago. We now sign Xavier Rhodes and TJ Carey. So I'm going to throw it to my man, Jason Spears. Jason, take it away. I do like this move. I think... There's things about this kid that I really like. I like his size, six foot, 205 pounds. He runs four, four, five. So he's very fast. In high school, he played with De La Salle, who's one of the most well-known high school football programs in the nation. He played there and was really outstanding for them. And he went to college and obviously gets drafted by the Raiders in the seventh round. And he makes the most of it. I mean, a lot of seventh round guys would have not made it, but this kid really persevered, played with a chip on his shoulder, and really earned himself a starting spot on the Raiders for those three years. He's very durable with a ton of experience. He started 50 games out of 92. You know, he can start, he can back up, whatever. Whatever you need, this guy can do. He played left corner, right corner. He played in the slot. He's even played safety. So I think this is a really under-the-radar, solid move by the Colts. I think you've got a great DB coach in Jonathan Gannon who's going to get the most out of this guy. He does have some talent, and he can help our team. So I'm actually pretty excited about the depth that he adds to our cornerback room and the things, the intangibles that he brings. I mean, this kid's been through some stuff in his life. When he was 16, he had a very, very life-threatening situation where if something wasn't done, he could have died. He had a blood clot, I think, in his heart. He had surgery. Luckily, he pulled through that and you know, was able to finish out his career. I think he took a year off and then finished off his high school career and was able to make a name for himself in college and then get drafted. So there's a lot to be said for guys like this who haven't had everything handed to them on a silver platter. So I like that about this kid. I've heard nothing but good things about his attitude and the type of person that he is in the community. So it, it just fits what Ballard's looking for. It's a one-year deal. It's the veteran minimum. So I think we got, I mean, honestly, there's nothing to lose with this. I think we got a depth guy. A lot of people think we're just signing a body to get cut. I don't think that. I think this kid can play right corner, left corner, slot, nickel. You can play safety if you want to add a third safety in there. There's a lot of things you can do with this guy, and he's very fast. So I think he's going to help our defense and you know just improve the depth of our squad. And if you look at what it's done for our DB room, I mean, I look at our, our corners and our safeties right now. We've got Xavier Rhodes, Rocky Sen, Kenny Moore as the starters, Marvell Tell, TJ Carey, and Quincy Wilson, who we don't really know what's going to happen with him. Are we going to trade him? Is he going to get cut? Those are our six right now. And I think TJ Carey's solidly on this roster because he's such a versatile player. I always talk about how important it is to have versatility at your depth, good versatility. And this guy can play corner, like I've mentioned a couple of times. He can do a lot of different things. He can play special teams. He's a very good tackler. So I just think this is a move that no one's going to talk about. But when we get into the season, knock on wood, hopefully we get into a season, you'll see how important somebody like this is to our roster. I mean, he's a back-end guy, but I do think he's a difference maker in the sense that he allows for, you know, you're not going to have to shove a rookie out there if somebody gets injured. You could put a guy that started 50 of 92 games in his career. So he's got, you know, a ton of experience and he's very durable He's still relatively young. He turns 30 in July. So, you know, there's some things about him, you know, his age and whatnot. But for what we need him for, I think this is a good move. With the signing and the DB room and all that, first of all, having Jonathan Gannon having worked with Xavier Rhodes before, I think is huge. I think that's going to help get Rhodes quickly into the system. And I think their working relationship was really good. And I think that's going to allow guys like TJ Carey to really – jump in with both feet and kind of see how X Rhodes is handling this thing and and then, you know, help these young guys. That's the biggest thing I've always talked with Luke about is it's great to have a young team, but you've got to have vets around them that teach them how to play, how to practice, how to watch film. 
And now we've added a couple of those guys, and I feel really good about our secondary. I think, you know, we maybe we trade, you know, Wilson on draft day and take another corner. That's possible. Or maybe we, we let Wilson play it out and see if he can, you know, make something out of his year this year. I don't know. But what I do know is adding somebody with Kerry's experience to the locker room, to the cornerback room, is going to do nothing but help our young players. You know, all the experiences that not only – Rhodes have but Carey's had you know he's played different two different places they really he hasn't really had a lot of success team wise he's played very well but he's been on teams that haven't had all that much success so he'll be I mean I think he's going to be chomping at the bit to really get going with the Colts because this will be the first time he's really been on a team that's expected to win so I know TJ Carey is excited about that I saw a tweet he put out that he was really excited so I just think the cornerback room gets even better when you add a couple vets that have had experience. And then a guy like Rhodes, who's been in the Pro Bowl and all that, I mean, it just it makes it so much easier for the coach. It's kind of like a hierarchy. You know, the coach has his underbosses, like, you know, in the mob. You got your, your, your head coach, then you got your DC, then you got your position coaches. Well, the position coaches in the secondary is a DB coach, and that's Jonathan Gannon. And it just kind of goes down from there. And then you go from the DB coach – to the veterans. The veterans would be TJ Carey and Xavier Rhodes. Then you have the young guys. You have Kenny Moore. You have Rock Yassin, Marv Altel. You have Quincy Wilson. So you're you're kind of looking at it as a hierarchy, and everything that's being taught from the top down is getting even more, trickled even more down to these young guys from the vets that are getting it from the coach. So I hope that makes sense. I think it helps our locker room. I think it helps our DBs. I think it helps us on the field. I think this is a win-win-win across the board. And I like what Ballard's doing. He's not just going out there and getting big big name guys constantly. He's also getting guys like Sheldon Day and TJ Carey that are going to help rotationally and help the defense if somebody goes down. I think that's very important. You you need to have deep depth to really go to where you want to get to. And last year we did not have that. This year we do. So knock on wood, we can get through the season without too many serious injuries. And when we do have an injury, we have guys that can come in and play well enough to win us some games. So I've watched him for since he came in the league and he's always been somebody that I was impressed by and just knowing his story made me respect him even more. So just taking a step back and looking at our overall defensive personnel now, you know, just looking at my board here, I'm looking at the defensive ends. We've got Ture, Houston, Banagoo, Muhammad. I like all four of those guys, all young except for Houston I think they all have a chance to be very very good then you got a guy like Tyquan Lewis that's also can play defensive end or defensive tackle I got him listed on both defensive end and defensive tackle because I think they're going to move him around but this is a big year for Tyquan Lewis Quincy Wilson and Tyquan Lewis have got to play well this year or that's the end that they're done here now you get into the defensive tackles you got the Forrest Buckner who's obviously a monster Danico Autry very talented. When, when when he's healthy, he's a, he's a big time problem. We saw that in 2018. And then you've got Sheldon Day, who's a really good rotational player. Grover Stewart, who really did a nice job last year. And then Tyquan Lewis, who I mentioned before, I think is going to get opportunities at both defensive end and defensive tackle. So really set in both spots. I mean, you could always add another edge guy. If somebody's there in the draft and you see somebody there in the draft that that would absolutely, you know, you have to take or that somebody that fits what you do, that you can always, there's always room for another edge guy. I think we're set at defensive tackle. Linebacker, I feel like we're set. But again, if you want to strengthen the back end of that linebacker core, you can always do that. But just looking at what we have right now, you know, we've got Leonard, we've got Okariki, we've got Walker. Those are our starters. And the backups we have right now, EJ Speed, Zaire, Franklin, and Adams. And Franklin and Adams, I think, could be pushed. I think the top four guys are pretty safe. Uh, Matthew Adams and Zaire Frank. I do like Zaire Franklin on special teams, though, although he do, he did get a few penalties last year. But I think they they might add a linebacker, try to you know push push those last two guys, get more competition there. But I do like our linebacking core. I think it's very very good, very talented, very young. Then we go to our cornerbacks, who we've already talked about. Xavier Rhodes is going to start on one side. Rocky Asen will start on the other. Kenny Moore will be in the slot. Marvell Tell, the third. TJ Carey and Quincy Wilson will be the three guys off the bench. I think you'd see Carey play in the slot if there was an injury to Moore. I mean, I think you'd see him play outside, too, if there was an injury to one of the other guys. Wilson can play outside. 
Marvell can play outside. So and and then you know you have safeties that can come down and play. We saw Milligan come down and play in the slot last year a little bit too. And then we get into our safeties right now. It's Hooker, Willis, Odom, and Milligan, who we just signed, I think, yesterday or two days ago. So I think we're pretty much set. I, I, I think the three possibilities or four possibilities, if there's guys that we want, is an edge player, a linebacker to kind of push the back end of our, our linebacker depth to get better, kind of give them competition, Corner, if we cut Wilson or trade Wilson, I think corner, if there's a guy there, and just thinking off the top of my head, the guys that fit us, Trayvon Diggs, the kid out of Virginia who whose name is escaping me, Bryce Hall is another good guy. There's four guys in this draft that I think fit the Colts really, really well. Kid out of Iowa who I can't pronounce his last name very well, Michael something that I, I I don't have the the name on me right now, so I don't want to mispronounce it. I mean, I like our corners. Could we add another one? Yeah, I think we could. I think we'll look at that if there's one there. And then safety. I think I think if there's a safety that's really good there, I think you got to really take a look at that. So those are the three or four positions that that we could look at. But again, man, we have pretty much solid depth, you know, at all positions you're kind of concerned with the defensive end thing just because Therese coming off that injury, but I think he's going to be good to go. You've got, you know, Houston's, you know, got another year of tread on him. So you could go defensive end. I think they probably will at some point get a defensive end in this draft. If they don't sign one in free agency, defensive tackle, I think we're good linebacker. I think we're good, but if they, if they see somebody that they really, really like, they'll take them. Corner again, if there's somebody they like, they'll take them if he fits what we do. And then safety, same deal. You got guys like Antoine Winfield Jr., who I really like a lot, that I think could help our our safeties and allow, you know, our, our coordinator to do a lot of different things because he can come down and play the slot, he can play free safety, he can play strong safety. He's very versatile. That's a guy I like a lot in this draft. But uh, I mean, who knows what the Colts are gonna do? Definitely know that. When looking at the roster makeup, I can say with pretty good odds that most of their draft picks are probably going to be offense because we've just got so many needs over there. I mean, wide receiver, tight end, O-line. I do think there'll be a couple defensive draft picks, but I think most of them will be offensive. And and we'll get into that probably the next show, what our offense looks like at this point. Um, but I just wanted to go over the the defense and what it looks like at this point, what I thought of the TJ Carey signing, what I think of Chris Ballard and what he's done. I think he's really went about, you know, really strengthening this defense and doing the things, you know, he needed to do before we get to the draft to really take away some of those glaring issues that and needs that we had so he could concentrate on other things. And I think he's done a really good job of that. Obviously, we're not going to have any idea how this pans out until we get on the field, and hopefully that'll happen, and hopefully it'll work out well. But on paper, I like what we've done. It's just a matter of these guys got to stay healthy and they got to play well. And I think we've got the coaching staff and everybody in place to get the best out of these guys. So I really like the moves, and I love what we've done on the defensive side of the ball. And I can't wait to see how these guys play. I just, I'm excited. I like a lot of the talent. And uh, you got to remember, most of these guys are young. So they're only going to get better. I mean, you know, Leonard's going to get better. Buckner's going to get better. Okariki's going to get better. Walker's going to get better. Speed's going to get better. Yasin's going to get better. Moore's going to get better. I mean, I can go Hooker, Willis, they're all going to get better. Banigou. It just goes on and on. These guys are all going to get better. And when they finally get to the point where they need to be, we're going to be scary on defense. So hopefully, you know, my my, uh, breakdown of the defense and some of the moves we've made will put you in a a really good mood because I know it's it's tough with being in this quarantine and it can get kind of isolating and depressing. But hopefully hearing, you know, where we're at on the defensive side of the ball will cheer you up and hearing the podcast will cheer you up. I really hope everybody is staying safe and following the guidelines in your state. I've been basically hanging out at home, you know, watching film, watching movies, trying to prepare for the draft, talking to Luke, trying to figure this show out, trying to do the right thing and pump as much stuff out as we can because we love you guys and we appreciate the support. We know how hard this is for everybody. 
a lot of people losing their jobs, a lot of people, you know, struggling right now. So the least we can do is try to put our show out. So we've really been focusing on getting more content out to you guys, trying to get your mind off what's going on in the world and get our minds off of it as well. I mean, I love talking Colts football with you guys. You're the best fans. And hopefully this thing will all be over soon. So stay healthy and Godspeed. I'll talk to you soon.